Sergio Perez is struggling, making mistakes, regularly going out in Q2, and being beaten by not only Max, but many of the drivers in theoretically slower cars. So what's going on? Because he is a world-class driver, but he's one that isn't gelling with a world-beating car. Well, I've been studying his driving style, and that is the issue. So let me explain. First, have you ever had it where you've signed up to a free newsletter, and then you start getting a load of spam emails from a load of other sites? Or have you wondered why you keep on getting spam phone calls from suspicious and unknown phone numbers. Well, your data could have been sold without you knowing. Thousands of data brokers are aggregating your personal information, including your name, login credentials, and home address, and selling it to unknown businesses to be used as they please. But the good news is that Incogni, today's sponsor, can help. Incogni can get your data removed from these data brokers' servers, putting a stop to unwanted phone calls and emails. And all you need to do to get protected is create an account with Incogni by clicking the link in my description and give them permission to reach out to the data brokers on your behalf. They then deal with the data brokers to get your data deleted and will even conduct repeated removal requests to ensure your data stays off the market in the long run. The first 100 people to use code DRIVER with the link below will get 60% off their Incogni subscription. That's incogni.com forward slash driver. Now, back to the video. Firstly, there are days when Perez is phenomenal. Normally a dry race weekend on a street circuit with lots of heavy traction zones. That's where Perez absolutely thrives. But unfortunately for Perez, the calendar isn't just made up of Monaco, Baku, and Saudi Arabia. Thank goodness. And on the big circuits, Max has been dominating. But Max's average qualifying position is third, 0.33, Sergio's is 9.2, 9.2. Yes, Checo isn't a one lap specialist, but still, that's absolutely crazy. That is a massive difference, and is actually even behind Norris, who's also had his own car issues this year. So, what's going on? In interviews this year, Sergio has been hinting at what he thinks is the issue. And after Spa, he said, the last few races, I've been a step or two behind and always thinking consciously how I have to drive the car. Sometimes with how the car has been developed, does doesn't really suit me as much, so I have to work harder for it. Then in Zandvoort, he said this, it's just the sharpness, basically at medium and high speed that I've been struggling with. If you're not fully confident with the car up to 250 kilometers an hour into a corner, then you're doubting it a little bit more. So clearly the car was the issue for him. Now, I'm certainly not in the camp that thinks the Red Bull are developing a car just for Verstappen, but they are developing towards the ultimate pace of that car. And it seems that whatever they give Verstappen, he can deal with. A current concept works best with a certain and setup, and it's actually changed a little bit this season. Firstly, they're able to get the front axle to really bite on turning, with the downforce working the front axle and the rear happy to rotate a little bit through the corner. Max uses this to turn the car very early in the corner and powering out on the other side, carrying more speed out of the corner. Then when the car is loaded with downforce, so at the end of the straights in the braking zones and in the fast corners, they have been running the rear of the car very low. And this has been a key development that Red Bull has been working on. But why? Well, the Red Bull produces more of its overall downforce from the floor. So if you can run the floor closer to the ground, then of course you get more downforce. But it's all very difficult to do, and that's why other teams have been struggling to catch up. If you were to take the Ferrari or Mercedes floor and run it as low as the Red Bull, you would likely get a lot of bouncing. And for performance and safety reasons, you just can't get away with that this year. So what have Red Bull done to get their car to work like this? Well, last year for the first 2022 spec car, Adrian Newey revealed that he wasn't entirely focused on the aerodynamics. He was focusing on the suspension. Red Bull were trying to make sure they could control the platform of the car to allow the aerodynamics to work better. Because if you have control over pitch, roll and heave of the car, then you can design a better aero package to suit. And they had one key factor here, anti-dive and anti-squat. These are suspension tricks that aren't new, but if used correctly can make a massive difference to the stability of the car, and so improve the aerodynamics of the floor. So, anti-dive. Look at the front suspension of this year's Red Bull. Here are the top wishbones, and just look at the front to rear angle here. This is what we mean by anti-dive. The angle of these actually means that the pull rod is actively fighting the car nosing down under braking. This holds the nose up, meaning that the aero platform is flatter to the circuit under braking, meaning you get more downforce where you need it the most. It's all very clever. And they do a similar thing under acceleration, only that's called anti-squat. 
where the suspension's geometry fights the car sitting down at the rear under heavy acceleration, or crucially, when the car is heavily loaded with downforce. And this is part of the reason why Red Bull are so good through the fast corners. But I think this is also part of the reason why Checo is struggling. Wait, Checo drives with a very different style to Verstappen, maybe even polar opposite. It's actually why he's so strong at street circuits. Checo is very good at slow speed corners, and that's because he focuses so much on the exit. He's very careful with how he loads up the front end of the car, but is incredibly precise at where he places the car in the middle of the corner, meaning that he can get on the throttle earlier coming out of the corner. But Perez finds most of his time because of his feel on the throttle, loading up the rear tires at the exact right amount, with the rear tires right on the verge of wheel spin, meaning he is getting a great run coming out of the corner. But to aid this, he does like a car with a bit of understeer. Now, the understeer may slow him down a little bit on the entry to the corner, but it does help him on the exit, as slightly understeery cars are more stable on the way out of a corner when you're accelerating. But there is another thing. This style is very gentle on tires, and we made a whole video about that just up here, meaning that Checo often struggles to get his tires fired up in qualifying, but on the other side of things, can run very long stints in the race. Now, remember what I said about Red Bull's developments this year? Well, I think they come into play just here. So whilst anti-dive and anti-squat are useful to car designers, they can be a pain as a driver. Anti-dive can actually remove some of the feel under braking from the driver. So if you have too much, you can often see the car understeering a lot. And I personally think that this is something that Max can deal with, but that Perez struggles with. The same goes for anti-squat. You mechanically stop the rear of the car sitting down as much under acceleration, and you remove some of the rear weight transfer in the fast corners, things that you actually want as a driver. They give you the feel that you need to have the confidence in the car. Now, after what I said about Perez's skill with throttle application, you would actually think that that would suit him. But that's forgetting who he is up against. Where Perez is great in traction zones, Max can be the same, if not better. And Max can deal with the car being unstable. It's just second nature to him. He's incredibly adaptable and likes a car that turns in well, even if it's slightly unstable. Then he seems to be able to deal with the braking feel and the tricky rear end and the throttle application. I actually think many of the drivers would have the exact same issues Perez is having, because the car is that tricky, but mainly because Max is just that good. This all reminds me of when Ricardo was struggling at McLaren, which I explain all here. Remember, you can still enter to win a drive in a Formula 1 car with me, so just click up here, and I'll see you in the next one.